you're using Azure Purview, and there is a particular task that you would like to accomplish, such as a bulk modification. And depending on the circumstance, doing so via the point and click nature of Purview Studio may be too cumbersome, or in some situations, simply not feasible. And the alternative of writing code from scratch may seem onerous. This may be an ideal use case for Purview CLI, a command line interface for Azure Purview. Taking a step back for a moment, Azure Purview is a unified data governance service that helps you manage and govern your on-premises, multi-cloud and software as a service data. While Azure Purview provides a unified experience via Purview Studio for tasks that are better suited to a graphical user interface, there may be instances where we would prefer to interact with the service programmatically whether that be to perform bulk operations that may be just too time consuming with the point and click nature of the GUI, facilitate custom scenarios such as the creation of custom entities, or simply answer ad hoc questions. Fortunately, the underlying Azure Purview platform is open and can be consumed directly via the Azure Purview REST API, which is largely based on the open source Apache Atlas project. While this is great for developers who are inclined to roll up their sleeves and write code, understand how to authenticate with the service and make the necessary HTTP requests with the appropriate headers, query parameters, and payload, this can be off-putting in scenarios where we are just looking for a quick answer to something. Purview CLI is intended to abstract this complexity by surfacing the various Azure Purview API endpoints via a cross-platform command line interface, ideal for ad hoc tasks and quick exploratory operations. Purview CLI is built using Python and hosted on the Python package index, PyPy repository, and can be installed via the pip package manager by executing the command pip install Purview CLI. The first thing I'm going to check before attempting to install Purview CLI is that the version of Python we are using is version 3 or above. We can do this by typing the word Python into the terminal, followed by dash dash version. Next, if we would like to check if Purview CLI is already installed, and if so, what version, we can run the pip freeze command which returns an output of installed packages. Note that this demo is being performed in a brand new Python virtual environment, in which case there are no pre-existing packages. Finally, to install Purview CLI, we simply enter the following command, pip install Purview CLI. You'll notice during the installation that Purview CLI has several dependencies such as requests, doc opt and Azure identity. These will be automatically installed if not present. Now that Purview CLI has been installed, enter the letters P, V to see a list of common commands. After installation, but prior to executing any commands, there is one mandatory environment variable that we must configure, and that is Purview underscore name, which needs to be set to your Azure Purview account name. All other environment variables are optional and related to the various authentication mechanisms available as explained on the next slide. Purview CLI leverages the Azure Identity Client Library to attempt authentication via various sources in the following order, stopping when one succeeds. Environment variables, managed identity, Visual Studio Code, and Azure CLI. For example, if you're already logged in to Azure via the Visual Studio Code account extension or via the Azure CLI using the AZ login command, no additional configuration is necessary. Purview CLI will leverage pre-existing credentials. Alternatively, you have the flexibility to explicitly configure a specific set of credentials via the environment variables. Once Purview CLI is installed, we can attempt to execute a command such as pv glossary read.
You will notice that Purview CLI is informing us that we are yet to set the Purview underscore name environment variable in order for the tool to know which Azure Purview account we would like to interface with. Setting environment variables as described in the help text varies by environment. In this case, I am running Purview CLI on Mac OS via the terminal and therefore will configure this value via the export command. Now that our environment variable has been set, re-attempting the PV glossary read command shows a different error message indicating it was unable to find a set of credentials to authenticate with the Azure Purview service. There are a variety of options on how this can be configured and sourced, such as additional environment variables or pre-existing credentials via the Azure account extension in Visual Studio Code. In this example, I'm going to authenticate via the AZ CLI using the AZ login command. Now that we are logged into Azure using the AZ CLI, re-attempting the PV glossary read command will return the expected JSON response, which in this case contains details about our glossary. The credentials executing Purview CLI commands will need the following RBAC roles. Purview Data Curator to provide read-write access to the catalog, and Purview Data Source Administrator to provide read-write access to the scan endpoint. Here we are in the Azure portal. I'm going to open my pre-provisioned Azure Purview account instance and navigate to Access Control. Here we're going to click on Add Role Assignments. Within the Role drop-down menu, search for the Purview Data Curator role. Within the Select drop-down menu, search for the Azure AD account or service principle you'll be using to execute Purview CLI commands. Select the appropriate Azure AD object from the search results and then we click Save. We'll then need to repeat this process for the second role, Purview Data Source Administrator. Once complete, navigate to Role Assignments tab to confirm that both roles have been successfully assigned. Purview CLI commands start with the PV prefix. Typing this into the terminal or command prompt will reveal a list of common commands. Common commands include the full suite of Apache Atlas concepts such as entity, glossary, lineage, relationship, and types. There is also additional commands such as scan, insight, and search. Typing any combination of PV and one of the common commands will reveal a list of subcommands. Subcommands are then followed by a list of parameters. All parameters are required by default. Parameters enclosed with square brackets are optional. Mutually exclusive parameters are enclosed with parens and separated with a pipe. The equal val indicates parameters which require an input. For example, dash dash parameter name equals value. Input can be specified after a space, for example, dash dash parameter name space value, or after an equal sign, for example, dash dash parameter name equals value. Parameters that do not require an input are Boolean operators and are false by default and only true if present. Parameters followed by the ellipses indicates parameters that are allowed to repeat themselves. For example, dash dash GUID equals one, two, three, four, five, space, 
dash dash GUID equals 23451 and so on. If we look at the PV types command, we can see a list of subcommands that have examples of the different types of parameters. While all parameters are required by default, parameters such as those related to the read type def subcommand are optional as they are enclosed with square brackets. Executing the command PV types read type defs without the additional parameter will end up returning all type definitions. As you can see, the response is quite verbose. But what if we're only interested in a particular type of type definition? We can get a list of allowed values by typing in the PV types dash dash help command to see a list of valid types such as classification, entity, enum, relationship, and struct. Now that we know our allowed values, we can re-execute the PV types retype defs command, but this time including the type parameter and requesting classifications only. As you can see from the results, type definitions outside of classifications such as entity, enum, and relationship and struct are empty, with only the classification type definitions being returned. Another example are mutually exclusive parameters that are enclosed with the parens and our choices separated with a pipe. For example, the read type def command can either be a GUID or a name. In this example, we are going to request the type definition for Azure SQL table and request this by specifying the name. Alternatively, we can execute the exact same command, but this time specifying the object via the GUID. In some instances, you'll notice parameter values that do not require a value. These are Boolean operators which are false by default, but true if present. For example, if we execute the PV entity read bulk command for a particular object without the ignore relationships option, the response is verbose. Alternatively, if we execute the exact same command, but this time specifying the ignore relationships flag, the output is much more succinct. Finally, parameter values followed by the ellipsis can be specified multiple times to form a list. For instance, if we wanted to retrieve multiple objects, we could just repeat the GUID parameter for each object that we want to return. In this last example, we are going to bring it all together using a Python-based Jupyter Notebook. The first cell in our notebook will install or upgrade the Purview CLI package using the magic function percentage symbol pip. With the package installed, we can clear the cell output and move on to the next cell in our notebook. In this example, we are using Python to set our environment variables 
And rather than relying on pre-existing credentials, I've explicitly configured a service principle as the identity using Azure Client ID, Azure Tenant ID, and Azure Client Secret. To avoid disclosing sensitive environment values, I've pre-run this cell so we can skip to the next step in our notebook. In this example, we have a standard Purview CLI command, PV, glossary, read. But you'll notice as we are interspersing shell commands within a Python-based notebook, we must prefix our shell command with an exclamation point. Executing the command will then return the output. But what if we wanted to interact with the results as a Python object? The first step will be to store the output of the shell command within a variable. This variable will then store the output as an S list, which is a list like object. To perform additional operations, we can then subsequently convert the S list into a Python object using JSON.loads. With the glossary object converted, we can then retrieve values such as name and description as we would with any standard Python dictionary. Finally, we have an example of how to pass values stored in Python variables to the shell command. For instance, this might be the name of a type or the GUID of an object. And this uses the curly braces syntax. Thank you for watching this video on how to get started with Purview CLI. If you'd like to learn more, head on over to aka.ms slash Purview CLI, where you'll find a list of all the commands available, as well as some sample notebooks on how to perform certain operations.